with a company called Faded Industry Entertainment in Pittsburgh, PA. And uh, I just have a couple quick questions for you. We're looking forward to your uh, show here on Friday with us at Alter Bar. How long has the band been around? We started around 2003. We called ourselves Mass at the time, and it was just Paul and me. And we were never really intending on becoming a band full-fledged at the time. We thought we were being some kind of production, like Neptune's production team or some sort of electronic tool or something. And I don't really remember or understand how we turned into a rock band, but we did in New Orleans. Uh, okay. And Hurricane Katrina happened, and that spelled us out of the city for a while and onto the road. And after that, we we toured for a long time before uh, we settled. So that's, that's the short form story of how short we came together. And, okay. Yeah. <laughs> how how would you define the band's music in in a single sentence? Okay, in a sentence, uh, the band's music in a, in a sentence, I would describe it as a shark uh, with a machine gun riding on the back of an elephant, perhaps. All right. All right. I like that. I like that. Okay, uh, can you recall a childhood experience that made you want to be in a band or get into music to begin with? Yes. The thing that made me want to be a drummer was my dad's cassette tape collection. And it was a song called Sing, Sing, Sing with Gene Krupa on the drums. And it was this nine and a half minute song with about three different drum solos in it. And it's the famous live performance where Benny Goodman and, and Gene Krupa were able to get people to dance in the aisles of Carnegie Hall, which apparently was a big deal at the time. Uh, so so that, was, that was an introduction to music for me and the Beach Boys as well. There's a lot of really uh, embarrassing music you know, in my childhood and adolescence as well, that I, that gotcha. I would drum along with and listen to and dance along with, from Yanni to Paula Abdul to lots of contemporary Christian music. But gotcha. I listened to some cool stuff, too. It was just all just thrown together. I guess when you're a kid, you have no concept of, of what you're supposed to be liking. You just like whatever you like for whatever reason you like it. So I liked a lot of different stuff. And then, um, exactly. I grew up in this, in this really... Um, hyper charismatic wild church where the drummer got to play as loud as he wanted and they let me play loud and <laughs> poorly <laughs> and then that was that was what got me hooked with playing with people yeah I've, I've, I've seen you i've seen you live now i've seen you live and you definitely <laughs> uh you definitely put on a show man that's for sure uh what what uh what do you what do you think is a little bit different about the music industry today than what it was i think it's an exciting time now, more than ever, I can find music from, uh, from from other countries and from other decades at the you know at the click of a mouse online. Exactly. And yeah, I, can, yeah. I can hunt and dig for for records that I used to have to go on uh, excursions for. I used to have to go to a particular city and look in a particular bin and find this one record. And now I can find it. Uh, just by perusing iTunes. Now, the beautiful thing about that is I can find more great stuff than I ever could before. The sad thing is it all becomes more ephemeral. You know, it, it all becomes easier to get and less less valuable and something that I don't dig into as deeply. You know? and so there's the good and bad of that. But overall, I think the good outweighs the bad. I really do. Uh, and, and I'm yeah. happy about all of these reissues, um, you know, and, and labels like Numero and and all this, they're, they're releasing uh, stuff that they find in, you know, garage sales and stuff that wouldn't, you know, have come out otherwise. I mean, a great example is that song, You and Me, that was used in the movie Blue Valentine. Now, that song was a demo that never got released since this beautiful, sad soul song sung by this girl who never had any other hit otherwise. And we found out about it now. You know, we, we got it, and it was lost, you know, right. for... Uh, 30 years or so, but we got it back. So that's an exciting time in that regard for, for me and for, as a Very music cool. lover. Okay, uh, how did the uh, how was the Honda Civic door with Incubus, and how did uh, how did their fans take to your music? I think they liked it. It was a tease to only play five songs. That's about whenever I start to get really comfortable. So to have to end the show right whenever I'm getting settled in was not ideal. It was by far the easiest tour we've ever done. And the guys yeah. in Incubus and Lincoln Park both are just saintly. They're the nicest people. 
you could ever imagine. And you kind of hope, you, you hope that those successful people are happy, you know, and gracious and nice, and in fact they are. Um, you know, so um, I just got invited by Chester to do this charity performance. Sadly, I won't be able to do it because I'm, I'm going to be, well, not sadly, I wish I could do it, but my, my daughter's supposed to be born at the same time, so I won't be able to go to this. But he's doing some you know, wonderful things. He's getting a whole bunch of musicians together and they're selling tickets and raising hundreds of thousands of dollars for charity and just doing a show. Um, but anyhow, that's the kind of people they are. They're great. Okay, they're cool. Like, you know, they be. Yeah, they're, yeah. Uh, they're another, one, another one of my favorite acts, too, man. So it was, uh, it was great to see you guys together on, on the road. Um, yeah. Also, I have uh, another question. Your your videos have always been cutting edge and unique. Uh, what what kind of what kind of things do you guys have in the future for videos? Well, we've made the same kind of video a few times now. So, um, certainly with the next record, trying to think of how we can make a creative video that doesn't um, that isn't within the same format of a single camera band antics camera trick stop motion kind of thing. We need to. I realize clearly that it's time to try something different. Um, you know, and usually we, we at least with each record have the time and effort and energy to, to make one video that we think is really good and crazy. So we haven't written the songs yet, so that comes first. We're, we're currently writing the songs for record number four, and then we'll start to think about the videos. And, however, it would be fun to think of a video first and then try to write a song for it. We've never done that. That might be a that might be the thing we need to do with the creative. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. What what's the uh what's the target for the next the next album release? What's the target for that? Oh certainly less than a year from now. Awesome. For it to be awesome. actually released. How would be now, have, you, if it took longer. Yeah. have you guys ever played Pittsburgh before? Not as you last week. Years ago in previous bands. And I've only been there once in my life. And loved it. We never played Pittsburgh, and I'm embarrassed by that. Very cool. Yeah. Well, well if you guys have a little extra time, would be we'd be more than willing to show you around some of the cool spots too. Uh, just have to let us know. Um, let's yeah. see what else. What What do you guys have in store for for Pittsburgh on Friday? Oh, we don't fool around. I mean, especially since it's our first time here, and you know, since we're going to be taking the rest of the year off, we don't have any reason to hold back. We'll play. Uh, we play our hearts out, and also we have a day off before here and a day off after. So, um, you know, we can uh, we can get pretty beat up and uh, and lost ourselves and not have to worry about the next show. So I, I I think you can expect a good show. We've had some really good shows on this tour. Nice. And nice. Was all, and uh, but a lot of it does depend on the audience too. You know, if if the audience is is obviously in the mood for a good show, then it just hypes us up that much more. It happened in Montreal. We were in Montreal recently, and the audience just they they are so worked up. It's, there's this, you know, certain audiences will do that, but get you so excited and worked up that you really try to play your best and just you know it can become a bit intimidating, but. We'll see. Very cool. Yeah, the venue you're playing in Pittsburgh is uh, is uh, is an old church, and it's it'll be a really nice, intimate setting. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing you guys there. Um, let's see. I guess the final question that I have for you then would be: uh, What artist or group would you like to have wiped from musical existence? Mm, okay. So this is who I think has done the most harm. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a better way to look at it. Let's take a second, um, because there is a lot of music where I feel that even though I dislike it, even though I feel like they're doing harm, I, I, I see benefit and I see someone getting some kind of release from it, you know, some kind of encouragement, um, you know, or just some kind of uh, joy. I think, you know, and then there's so much music that I love because of how bad it is, but, and I know they get picked on so much, but hard for me to think of anything I like less than it comes down to just either train or nickelback. Hard to do. <laughs> but, you know, I, with. And I think I'm going to lean on, on I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably get rid of train because the lyrics. Um, okay. The lyrics really bother me. Uh, however, you know that song Photograph by Train that the, 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 
because it's that long journey. You're saying good. Yeah. That, that's the reason that I'm going to leave Nickelback because it's easier for me to laugh at. It's, e- it's easier for me to think it's a little funny. Um, train, train's the one that I'm sending at home. I think I kicked off the island. Gotcha, gotcha. Sorry to throw that one on you, but uh, that's what I like to have a like to have a little curveball for oh, musicians there. Oh. Wait, well, wait, I need to I need to revise my answer. Okay, go ahead. Godsmack. It's Godsmack. Train, 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 <laughs> Godsmack. All right, cool, cool. I uh, I will agree with Godsmack, you on those ones for sure. Down. All right, Darren. Uh, well, once again. We've been talking with Darren King from the band Mute Mass. Uh, my name's Isaac, once again from Faded. 